Worship Him. Let's stand on our feet and worship Him. He deserves the praises of His people. Amen? Amen. He inhabits the praises of His people. So let's praise Him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you praise for you deserve it. I give you praise for what you've done. I give you praise for you are able. I give you praise till I overcome. I give you praise when the sun is shining. I give you praise in the dark of night. I give you praise when the battle rages. I give you praise till it works out right. Shout of the King is among us. God lives here in our praises. Shout of the King is among us. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Oh yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Again. I give you praise for you deserve it. I give you praise for what you've done. I give you praise for you are able. I give you praise till I overcome. I give you praise when the sun is shining. I give you praise in the dark of night. I give you praise when the battle rages. I give you praise till it works out right. Shout of the King is among us. God lives here in our praises. Shout of the King is among us. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Shout of the King is among us. God lives here in our praises. Shout. Of the King is among us. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Oh yes, Lord, hallelujah. Heaven opens as we sing your praise. Angels, angels join us as we praise your name. Yes, Lord. Heaven opens as we sing your praise. And angels join us as we praise your name. Heaven opens as we sing your praise. And angels join us as we praise your name. Yes, heaven opens. Heaven opens as we sing your praise. And angels join us as we praise your name. Come on, church. Shout of the King is among us. God lives here in our praises. Shout of the King is among us. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Shout of the King is among us. God lives here in our praises. Shout of the King is among us. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Shout of the King is among us. God lives here in our praises. Shout of the King is among us. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Shout, shout of the King is among us. God lives here in our praises. Shout of the King is among us. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in everything.
spinning. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him in everything. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's only one way through Jesus. The name of Jesus, the only way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, but only through the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. I lay my life down at your feet. You're the only one I need. I turn to you and you are always there. In troubled times, it's you I see. I put you first, that's all I need. I humble all I am, all to you. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. You are always, always there Every how and everywhere Your grace abounds so deeply within me Within me And you will never, ever change Yesterday, today, the same Forever, till forever meets no end church to sing one way Jesus you're the only one that I could live for one way Jesus you're the only one that I could live for one way Jesus you're the only one that I could live for one way Jesus you're the only one that I could live for are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight for you. We live in all for you. Yes, you are the way. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight for you. We live in all for you. You are the way. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight for you. We're living all for you. Yes, you are the way. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight for you. We're living all for you. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. Somebody praise Him tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are the only way, the truth, and the life. Nobody else. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise His wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's worship Him tonight, hallelujah, and search every corners of our hearts, hallelujah. You stood before creation, eternity in your hand. 
you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand you stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame my sin weighed upon your shoulders my soul now to stand So what can I say, and what can I do, but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. upon salvation your spirit alive in me my life to declare your promise my soul now to stand so what can I say What can I do? My soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all. It's yours. Oh, I am. 
can I say and what can I do but offer this heart oh God completely to you so what can I say so what can I say What can I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. compassion a love that's never failing let mercy fall on me and everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of a savior the hope of nations he can move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered you find me and all my fears and failures yes fill my life again I give my life to follow everything I believe in now I surrender
the risen King. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King, who oh, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Oh, Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. Of the risen King, Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King, Jesus. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Hallelujah. He is our risen King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. He deserves the praises. He deserves the praises. He is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. He deserves more than that. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're an awesome God. Hallelujah. You're an awesome God, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We exalt your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. Amen. Amen. God is good. Forevermore. <laughs> All right, before you take your seats, let's shake one hand, one with another. Amen. Hallelujah. We have two hands. Shake one. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Awesome worship. Amen. Amen. Let's give God another clap offering. Amen. Because he deserves it. His presence is here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, while worship was going on, I was wrestling in my seat because for some reason, all of a sudden, I felt like I was by myself. And I'm asking God, please, don't let me go up there by myself, Lord. You know, have you ever been in a situation where someone asks you to come up and say something and you're asking your friend, come with me, come with me? Well, that's how I was feeling. I, for some reason, I just, like, his presence was gone for a second there. And just, that, that was just enough to scare me because I, I don't want to come up here without the presence of God. He's my mouth, I'm the mouthpiece for him, and, uh, and I need his anointing in order for me to deliver his word to you. So welcome, welcome. Um, I'm glad to be here because I was sick earlier this week, and it kind of hit me hard. And, um, but my energy as the week went on started coming back more and more, especially as I started preparing for this message. Um, the energy just really came back. I was able to go back to work and spend some time because we have family here from the Philippines, and so much is going on. It really can take a lot out of you. And uh, if you're not careful, you can, you can get sick, and I think that's what happened to me. But I thank you so much for all the prayers. I had people telling me, I'm praying for you, Pastor. And I definitely felt the prayers because the energy level just went from zero to 10 almost overnight. So thank you so much for all the prayers. Amen. You know, this is my favorite place to be on Sunday. My favorite place to be on Sunday. It used to be that I used to want to stay home and watch whatever was on TV and let whoever goes to church go to church and come back and while I'll still be sitting there. But it's such a blessing that I have changed, that I have changed, that what in that uh, video that was played earlier, the things that I used to think that I liked, I now run away from. And the things that I used to think that I didn't like, I now run to. So I love being in the house of the Lord. Amen. How many of you here love to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Come on, there should be more hands than that. How many be, love to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 So can I have the slides up, please? Tonight is actually a very special message because um, it's, all, it's, it's a command in the Bible. It's actually some of the words that is in Jesus' first message. These are the words that he, he well, not the whole, all those words, <laughs> but repent. We're talking about repentance tonight. And I know everyone has an idea of what repentance means to them. Or, uh, you know, we talk about it um, quite a bit, but what is it? What is it really? So the, the title of our message is Repent, Don't Ignore the Signs. I like the signs that I found when I was looking. You have attention, your GPS is wrong, turn back now. You know, some of us don't pay attention to the GPS anyway. But uh, turn back now, or beware, I'd turn back if I was you. I like that one. Beware, I'd turn back if I was you. Or danger, wrong way, turn back. So have you ever... And I know all the hands in the house would come up. Have you ever ignored a road sign because you thought you knew a better route or a better way? Or did you think that maybe there's no one else around so uh, I, can, I don't have to pay attention to what that sign says? How many of you guys do roll and stop sometimes and don't completely stop at the stop sign? Mm? Yeah, I think we're all guilty. We ignore the sign sometimes. With the sign, it says stop. But we say we stopped enough. We'll roll through because no one else is coming. Have you ever, have, have you ever ignored the signs in your life when things that took you down a wrong road? You know, you wanted this job so bad and uh, you did everything that you wanted to get this because this was the career path that I think is for me. And, but all these signs were coming saying that, you know, no, maybe this is not really the right thing for you. Uh, you know, there's people who are saying, hey, you know, that person, the boss that you'll be working for is probably not the kind of person you want to work for. And, or someone might say, I know your personality, and, and actually I don't really think that you would be a good fit in that company. You know, sometimes we ignore the road signs when they're right there in front of us. We always try to convince ourselves that we are right and everyone else is wrong. 
You know, how can I be wrong? I remember when I was uh, going to uh, pick up Junior from school, and I was on the 110, and there's a left turn that's after a certain time of the day that you're not allowed to take. And I didn't think that anybody was around, and it's shortcut to get to his school. So I, last minute, said, I'm just going to go. And I took that left turn, and then as soon as I took the left turn, whoo! You know, and I tried to reason with the police and tell them I was, I'm going to go pick up my son from school. If I'm not there at a certain time, you know, he just kept writing. He didn't care what I said. So sometimes we do things because we think no one is looking. And we'll make that, that wrong turn. So this morning, the, this, the message is about repentance. Recognizing those warning signs and turning back. That's the key word, turning back. And we'll be taking our lessons today from Mark 1, 4, 14 through 15, and from Luke 15, 11 through 24. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, God, for your presence tonight. I thank you that you are here with me right now, that you walked up these stairs with me, God, that you said in a small, gentle voice, I'm always there. And I thank you for the encouragement. Lord, I pray, God, for those who are here right now, Lord, that I thank you, Lord, that they made a, a, a deliberate decision, God, to be here to hear your word today, Lord, that they are, uh, their hearts are open and their minds are open and they're for your, your, your presence, God. I thank you for the praise. I thank you, Lord, that they are ready to uh, worship you, Lord, th this afternoon, God, and I just pray, Lord, that this word will touch them in their hearts and in their minds, God, that they will know that you are God. Thank you, God, for being the Lord of our lives. We love you, Jesus, and we lift this up to you in your name. Amen. 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 So let's look at Mark 1, 14 and 15. It says, now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel to the kingdom, I mean, of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Let me repeat that. It says, repent and believe in the gospel. So let's give a little context to what Jesus, what's going on here. Jesus had been baptized by John the Baptist about 40 days prior to this. He came in and he didn't preach, but he came and he was baptized. And it says that immediately the spirit impelled him to go out into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels were ministering to him. So since then, since then, John the Baptist had been taken into custody. So now John the Baptist has decreased, as the Bible states, so that Jesus can increase. Jesus came into Galilee preaching. He came into Galilee preaching because Jesus knew the situation of the people there. And he knows our situation even to this day. He had seen their political problem. He had seen their political problem. They were a colony under the rule of Romans, of the Romans, under the Roman Empire. So he understood what they were going through politically. He also understood their economic problem. They were in poverty due to a corrupt government system. They had to pay taxes on, on things. They, they were in poverty. They were the rich, and then they had the poor. The rich were the ones who would uh, more or less were the puppets of the Roman empower, Empire. But there wasn't really much of a middle class. You were either rich or you were poor. And it was because of a corrupt government system. And then they also dealt with a social problem. The social problem was that this is their land. This is the land that God promised them, yet they are second-class citizens in their own land. Can you imagine how that is? If you, you know, if we say this was the Philippines right now, but it wasn't run by, the Philippi by, by Filipino people. It was run by someone else. This is your land. This is your country. This is your place, but someone else is running. You're under someone else's rule. You can imagine how it made the people feel, how they were 
going through so much strife. So his words to the people and his words to us this very day, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. And he goes on to say, repent and we believe in the gospel. So let's evaluate the words of Jesus, because this is his first public message to the people. His first public message to the people. He's saying here that the kingdom of God is at hand, and it is that solution, it is the solution to the, all the strife that's going on in their life. It is the solution to all the strife that's going on. But he also points to the root cause of their problems, which is sin. He's pointing to the root problem of the, the root source of the problem, which is sin. Or he would not have used the word repent. What would you need to repent for if you had, did not have sin in your life? Because of the sin, they were under the kingdom of darkness. Let me repeat that. Because of the sin, they were under the kingdom of darkness. But Jesus came in and said, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God, uh, he wants us to get out of the darkness and come into his kingdom. He is setting the, the, the motion for us to leave the kingdom of darkness and to move into his kingdom. He wants us to be transferred into the kingdom of God. So what is the meaning of the kingdom of God? What is the meaning of the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the rule of God in the lives of men and women on earth and in eternity where Jesus is the king. Amen? Amen? Let me repeat that. The kingdom of God is the rule of God in the lives of men and women on earth and in eternity where Jesus is is the king. There's an author, an evangelist, his name is Miles Monroe, and he wrote this. He said, a kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with the personal will, with his personal will, purpose, and intent, producing a culture, values, morals, and lifestyle that reflects the king's desires and nature of his citizens. How many would agree with that? That's, that, that sounds like, you know, what a, a kingdom is. So who would we want to be the king of our kingdom? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Amen. So that we can reflect on his morals. We can reflect on his way of living, his way of life. So that we can be citizens in the kingdom of God. Amen. I think we all want to be citizens in the, king of, uh, the kingdom of God. Amen? But there's two steps in Mark 1.15 to transfer to the kingdom of God. Two steps. Jesus mentions repent. 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 And the second step is believe in the gospel. Believe. We had a good question that was asked in Bible study on Friday. You know, it was asked that, well, people, you know, they, they call us, you know, bigots and that we're, you know, um, we, because we only say that there's only one way to heaven. So they, they take, you know, they, don't, they have a problem with that because they think that we're just trying to be uh, in inclusive and exclusive and there's only one way. But... And they said, well, how do you convince? The question was, well, how do you convince someone or, or tell someone, um, John 14, 6, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one else comes to the Father except through him. How do you tell someone that? We know that Jesus is the way, but how do we, how do we deliver that message? And it's clear because we believe in the gospel. We believe that the Bible is the word of God. And everything that's in the Bible is inerrant, is true, and is his word. And if we believe that, now so someone else may not believe that, but if we're convinced of that, if we believe that, then we can say with all of our heart 
that we believe that this is the word of God and everything that this word, the Bible says is true. So if the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then this is what, then I believe that this is what um, is the truth. Now, I would give them the Bible and say, I want you to have this so that you can read, so that you can understand and know that Jesus is God. That you can know the truth. That you can know the truth. So we need to believe in the gospel. Without that belief, then it doesn't come across as sincere. Without that belief, how are they to believe you if you don't really believe yourself? So believe in the gospel. So what is the meaning of repentance? What is the meaning of repentance? I had to practice this word. The Greek word for repent in the New Testament, and I knew that Pastor, um, Pastor was going to be back from the Philippines, so I wanted to make sure. I think I got this right. Metanoel. Metanoel. All right. I got a shake. All right. Which means to change one's mind. So that is the Greek word. There's, I actually found there was three words in the New Testament, but this one was more commonly used when they talked about repentance, and that's metanoel. Uh, but it means to change one's mind. And this involves a turning from sin with contrition to God. So you're turning to, uh, from sin, not because you just think it's the right thing to do, but because you're doing it to honor God in contrition to God, to honor him in fear of God. You're turning away from your sin. It's like you headed out for a drive down the freeway, but you went down the wrong way and were now headed down into oncoming traffic. Imagine that. I actually did that once. I actually did that once. I was coming back, and this was in Louisiana. The roads are crazy there. It run, a one-way road turned into like a four-lane or it just changed. I don't know where I missed the turn, but somehow I am. Luckily, it was about midnight, and I'm driving down the road, and there's a, headlights coming right at me, and then all of a sudden, there's red and blue lights on top. <laughs> Again, I don't know what it is, but the police, was, he was good because he understood that I wasn't from there, and I didn't understand the road, and he helped me turn around because somewhere that road turned into a one-way road come with oncoming traffic. So he didn't give me a ticket. He understood the situation. But what if I continued to try to travel down that road? I could have killed myself or killed someone else or involved in a serious accident. But God sent the, the, the black and white <laughs> to turn me around. You know, we don't want it to get that far where we need a policeman to come in to get us to turn around when we know that we're going the wrong way, once we realize we're going the wrong way. So you need to turn around and go the other way. You need to turn around and go the other way. That is what repent basically means, to turn around and go the other way. You're headed down the wrong way, the way to hell. And I know I don't like to use that word, but you know what? It's a true place. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And I don't want anyone in this place to go to H-E double hockey sticks. That's the way I was taught to say it because it was a bad word in my house <laughs> growing up. I want everyone here to go to heaven. So there has to be a point that we turn from our sins. We need to have a change in our mind, a change in our mind to turn away. That is what it means to repent. And this can best be described in the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15, verses 11 through 24. I want to share this one because I consider myself a prodigal as well. And maybe all of you have some, some type of a prodigal story. But man, the, the story from the video earlier, uh, if you were here for the testimony, and my story is so close. I mean, I wasn't uh, abusive or a bad kid in that way where I was fighting with my parents, but I sure thought that, you know, I wanted to get out and have fun with the other kids and, re and found out really soon, really fast, that that is, that wasn't fun. That was getting me in trouble, taking me down the wrong road, 
And until I was able to turn, to come to my senses and turn, I don't know where I'd be at to this day. But let's read the story of the prodigal son, starting at verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his census, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you and and heaven and against you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Amen. What a what a wonderful and powerful ending. But let's look at the first, the the picture of this story. It's broken down into 10 parts, five and five. So first you have five pictures of sin. There are five pictures of sin here. And I'm not talking about a picture of water. I'm talking about like you paint a picture. You can see it. The first one is one that gets everyone, and that's self-will. Self-will. In verse 12, it says, give me my inheritance. Give me my inheritance. The sinner lives according to his own will and not according to the will of God. You ever have some, you say, say to someone, how you doing? He said, I'm, I'm doing me. I'm doing me today. Or I'm, I'm just being me. About me, me, me. Self-will. Give me my inheritance. Imagine how the father felt when his son asked him while he was still living to give him his inheritance. How selfish can you be? He, was, he wanted to be the king of his own self. How many of you guys want to be the king? I don't see any hands now, but when you're doing something and, or you want to... to you want to be on top, you, you know, I want to be the king. I want to be the top person. I want everyone to be taking orders from me. I don't want to be the one take, get, uh, taking orders or giving, um, taking orders from someone else. I think we all get into that mode sometimes where we don't want to listen to someone. We, we want to be the one who says it. I'm in control. I'm in control of my own life. And he was saying to his father, I don't care if you are still alive. I want my inheritance and I want it now. The sinner says, I don't care about God. I don't care about God. I will do as I please. I want to be king and I want to be followed. How does that sound? It doesn't sound too good when you hear someone saying it out loud, does it? Doesn't sound good at all. But sometimes we catch ourselves in those modes. Sometimes we do. The next, the next one is separation. Separation. Journey to a far country. 
You know, a lot of times when you want to do something that you're ashamed of or you know it's going to get you in trouble, you don't do it in your home or you do it close by. You tend to go somewhere where no one knows you and no one, where no one will see you. You separate. The sinner, the sinner separates himself from God. Sin always results in separation. Sin always results in separation. The prodigal son separated himself from his father. It was not the father who separated himself from the son. Do you hear that? God, us, sin, us, sin, us, God is still here. It's not that God goes here because he doesn't want to be around sin. It's us who go, us who separate. God is, is constant, never changing, the same yesterday and today and forever, never changing. So let's not separate ourselves from God. That brief moment there, I don't know what it was that was going on in my head, but I felt that separation. And I quickly <laughs> called on God, please come back because I can't go up here by myself. I need you, Lord. I need you. Don't let sin separate you from the love of God. The third thing is waste. The third thing is waste. He wasted his possessions. He wasted his possessions in verse 13. Sin is wasting possessions that God has given. There are many gifts of God to everyone. We all have received gifts from God. The gifts of speaking, of seeing, moving, thinking, even the ability to love. Even the ability to love. When we sin, we misuse we abuse, we waste God's gifts. Y'all hear me? When we sin, we misuse those. We, we abuse those. We waste them. God has given us wonderful gifts. We all have certain talents, but the gifts he's given us to love one another, that's one of the most important gifts that he's given us. Because without his love, it's, we, it's impossible for us to love others. We shouldn't abuse that gift. We shouldn't misuse that gift. We shouldn't waste it. In the story, the prodigal son, he got his inheritance and he wasted it all. He spent it all on women and drinking and, and having fun. And when it came down to it, there was nothing left. Nothing left. The prodigal son wasted his inheritance with prodigal living. He wasted his inheritance in wine, women, song, and other vices. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. I know what it feels like. The fourth one, to be in want. To be in want. He began to be in want. And it's verse 14 says, The sinner is always wanting and yet is never satisfied. Always wanting but is never satisfied. I want this. And you'll do it for a while, and then you get bored. And you're not satisfied with it anymore. You know, we, we probably all know someone who's got on drugs, and uh, because they were going through whatever they were going through in their lives, they, they felt this need for something, and they heard from somewhere that if I take this drug, it'll take it all away. It'll numb me so I don't feel it anymore. And once we do it, then you wind up wanting more. And you want wanting more because you're never going to be satisfied. You never be satisfied. You don't want to be in want. <laughs> Especially when we have a, a heavenly father who provides all our needs. If we allow the joy of our father to live in our hearts, then we will never go bankrupt. The riches will overflow continually. The joy will never cease to come. It will never cease to come. Only want that we will be in is wanting more and more of his love. And that's good. That's good. When you want more and more of Jesus Christ in your life, that's what you want to be in want of. 
And the fifth sin, or the fifth picture of sin, is sinking to a low place. It says he sunk so low. He sunk so low. Became so angry he could have eaten pig's food. Have you ever been there? I have. I know what it feels like. That's why preaching this for me, you know, it's talking back to me again because it's bringing up those memories. And now I can see where I'm at and how, and I just thank God that he take, took me out of that. Sinking so low where you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Sunken so low that you, even when your car is repossessed, you don't even care. You knew it was going to happen anyway because you had no way to pay for it. Being out of work for so long or at a point to where you don't even think that you're ever going to get work again. Coming to that very low place. The sinner will be brought so very low by sin. So, you know, the thing is about sin is that it has a natural gravitational pull. You know, uh, as Isaac Newton's... uh, uh, for gravity, the apple always will fall. (laughs) Well, when you attach sin to your life, you will fall from the tree and you'll hit the ground. Sin has a gravitational pull. It brings down anyone who is in sin. The prodigal son became a pig herdsman. In that time, dealing with pigs as a, a, a Jewish young man, as an Israelite, is the lowest that you can go. But yet, he was willing to take any job. He was the lowest among all the servants. But here's the good news. The good news is the five steps to repentance. There's five steps to repentance. You don't have to stay in the low place. The first thing is realization. Some people say realization. I say realization. It doesn't matter how you say it as long as you know that we need to come to reality at some point in our lives when we are going down the wrong way, we need to come to reality. Realization. He came to himself in verse 17. See, the sinner must realize and admit his sinful condition. We must realize and admit our sinful condition. The prodigal son realized his pitiful condition. Oh, man, at my father's house, even the servants are doing better than me. Wow. We don't even think about being the son anymore. His thoughts are about being the servant and how the servants live. He didn't even think about how it was that he lived when he was with the father as the son. He could think, only think about what it was to be a servant, how the servants lived. The second one is decision. Decision. I will arise. I will arise. The sinner must decide to get up and out of his sins. The prodigal son decided to rise up and turn away from his sinful condition. He decided to rise up. You know, there's a song that... uh, He goes, we fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. We fall down, but we get up. Because a saint is just a sinner who fell down and got up. I can't remember who sung that, but when I hear that, I think about that particular moment. A saint is nothing but a sinner who fell down and got up. Amen? We're all saints here. We all have fell down, but we've all gotten up. See, the thing about the prodigal son was that he was alone. He was alone in this foreign land. The good thing about us is that we're never alone. We have this wonderful church family here who is there with their arms reached down, ready to pull us up at any moment. 
There's been many times where I was discouraged. And it it wasn't even someone from my own family who helped to pull me up. It was someone from the church family who said, come on, brother, I got you. We are blessed. We are blessed. And we need to continue to surround ourselves amongst other fellow believers. But if you ever catch yourself alone, just remember that God, he loves you. And he didn't go anywhere. And all he is waiting for you to do is make that decision. Make that decision. Turn around. The third one is carrying out the decision. It's one thing to say you're going to do something. It's another thing to actually do it. We have to carry out the decision. And it says in verse 20, and he arose. He said, I must arise. And then it says that he arose. I can imagine him down on the ground and he's doing whatever he's doing. I must arise. I got to go back. And then, you know, still down there contemplating how he's going to do this. I think we all go through that. We contemplate how, we, how we're going to do it. But let's not think too hard. Let's not complicate things. Jesus didn't come to make things complicated. He is the only way, right? There's no other way. So that makes things a lot easier. There's no complication to it. There's one way. But in order to get there, we have to go towards him. So arise. Get up. And do something. Just don't say it. The sinner, after making the decision, must rise up from his sin and carry out that decision. The prodigal son arose and he, and he left his sinful condition. He arose and returned. He left his sinful condition. Number four. Returning. Returning, and he came to the Father. And he came to the Father. The sinner must return to God by surrendering his life to the Lord. He turns his back against sin and returns to or faces God. You know, the devil likes to put shame in our lives, make us feel so ashamed that we are afraid to come back sometimes. But that is all that is, a trick, a ploy to keep you from the presence of God. Because he knows that when you're in the presence of God, he can't touch you. He can't put his hands on you. He can't enter into the same space that you are in. So wipe the shame away and return to the Father. He is waiting there for you. The prodigal son returned. He returned to his father. And then the fifth one is confession. Now, this is a, this is a, a very powerful word here, confession. And in the context of what we're talking about, I want to talk about this word a little bit. Confession. He went to the father, and, and the first thing he said to the father is, I've sinned. Now, I want you to pay close attention to that because he didn't run to the local temple and confess to someone there before he went to the Father. He didn't run to somewhere else and uh, to, to one of the priests and say a confession to the priest so that he was in okay to turn, return to the Father. He didn't do any of those things. He did one straight shot to the Father. A straight shot to the Father. He confessed, Father, I have sinned. Father, I have sinned. The sinner admits his sin before God and must not offer any excuses. Just say it. I have sinned. It wasn't because, well, I'm sorry because I did this because... I I did this because no need for excuses. There isn't any excuses. We are responsible for our, our own behavior. There is no excuses. There are no excuses. Offer your confession without any excuses. The prodigal son admitted his sin and did not give any excuses. 
He didn't even go to the point to say, I was a fool. He could have said that I was a fool. He didn't even offer that. I was a fool to ask for this and to run away. It's in, it's in the context. <laughs> it's how we feel sometimes. But we don't need to come to God and offer any excuses. Just tell him, God, forgive me. I have sinned against you, and I have sinned against my brother or my sister or my, my mother or my father, whoever it may be. And he, was, he, is, he will forgive you. He will forgive you. So our sins are forgiven because the blood of Jesus was poured out in Calvary to pay for all of our sins. His blood was poured out on Calvary to pay for all of our sins, for the sins of the world, for the sins of the world. The blood of Jesus is precious. The blood of Jesus is precious. In our Bible study, uh, Sister Heidi was sharing about um, where she had listened to a sermon, and it made me think. The, ser- the, the pastor was talking about the sacrifice that God made for us. Can you imagine you sending your child to be beaten by a whip and spit on and, and cursed at and caused to carry the, that heavy cross on a bare back that's just been whipped wide open. Can you imagine you, as a parent, giving up your child to go through that and watching it all happen before your eyes? Blood being poured out. We sometimes look at it as it not being such a big deal, but man, that's a big deal. That's a lot of love. He loved us that much. And he did it because we were sinners. And Jesus went along with it because he knew that he needed to pay the penalty for our sins. So when we say repent, let's not take the word lightly. Let's not take it lightly. When we say repent, let's really turn. Let's make an effort, just like the, 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 the young man in the story. Let's come to the realization that the way that we're going or what we are doing is not good for us. It's not in the will of God. It's not what God intended for us. And he gives us moment after moment, chance after chance, day after day, until his son returns to turn and to come back to the Father, to turn from our sins, to turn from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, where Jesus reigns as our King, as our Lord and our Savior. So in conclusion, we have been given the power to overcome sin. We have been given the power to overcome sin. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. When he went away into the clouds, he said, wait for the comforter. And that comforter came. And it changed the course of history. It changed mankind forever. Because now, just a mere person, us, simple person, all of you here have the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and that power gives us the power to heal, gives us the power to move mountains. We have that power. And because we are his sons and daughters, let's use that power. We have the power to turn from sin. We have that power. Because it's Christ who lives inside of us. The seed of God, which is the very life of Jesus Christ, is so powerful that it enables the Christian to overcome sin and live a holy life. So before I close, I want to leave you all with these three verses. 
from God's word. First John three, nine. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Amen. The next one is first Peter one, 15 to 16. And it says, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Amen? Amen. And the last one, 1 Peter 1, 23. And it says, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. Joshua 1, 8 says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. God wants everyone here, everyone we know, and those that God will bring into our lives in the future to be prosperous and successful. Keep those words on your lips. Know who you are in Christ. Know that God resides in you and that you have the power to turn from sin. Let's pray. Father, Lord, thank you, God, for your message this, this evening, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, that we all come to the realization, God, that you have put that power in for us, into us, Lord, to turn from sin, that we all must repent and we all must believe in the gospel. Lord, I pray, God, as we leave here this afternoon, that we leave here this evening, God, that we go with these words on our lips, with your word in our hearts and in our minds, so that we uh, can go out with boldness to share the gospel with others. And God, if there is anyone here, any of us, God, that uh, have sin in our lives, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you cleanse us right now that you show us the sin that's in our lives and you, you help us to turn from that sin and truly repent because it was a great sacrifice that you made for us, a great sacrifice, a great sacrifice of love for us, and we should honor you. Thank you, God. We give you all the glory and all the praise as we lift this up to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It is offering time, so with the love of Jesus Christ, give with all your heart. Amen. Amen.
Amen. God is good. Amen. We have a lot of things to be thankful for. Amen. Everything we have since when we were young, from the past, present, and the future, everything is from the Lord. And I just want to give thanks to God. And I know you guys have a lot of things to be thankful for. Too. And I just want to give everything back to the Lord. How great is our God. Amen. Sing with me. We have the lyrics available. And sing with me and worship with me. Amen. my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away our sins then sings my soul
to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray for um, our tithes and offering. Great and loving God, we come before you today. And first, we want to thank you for what you have given us, ourselves, our time, and our possession. Honoring you, God, is bringing our tithes and offering. Is a return act of worship. Lord, we offer this tithes and offering. Use this for the furtherance of your kingdom. We give you glory. We give you honor, of oh God. Through your power that work within us, we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jemma. I would like to welcome everyone. And also, happy 4th, 4th Sunday of the month. For July, uh, for June, as we leave June, let's welcome uh, July. Next month is going to be July. And just a couple of announcements here. Uh, reminder again, women's breakfast at 8 a.m. at the Commissings. Uh, you are now in session three, uh, entitled A Brand New Identity. And also for the praise and worship team, you have the quarterly meeting, uh, 4 to 5 p.m., same, same date, June 30, Saturday. Um, um, we don't have the video, but please watch this video for the youth concert, upcoming youth concert. Thank you.
Good evening, New Hope. This is Pastor Eric. How are you doing? Just want, wanted to send you a, a video greeting for this promotion Sunday and congratulate all of our students who graduated, all of our students who have been promoted uh, from kindergarten to our elementary, to high school, to our college students, and if we even have a master of programs there, uh, who, students who are taking up the master of program. Congratulations to each and every one of you on your achievements. Uh, we thank the Lord for helping you, and you have proven yourself approved unto God and unto your teachers and uh, professors. Congratulations. Hope we could be there to rejoice with you. And we just, we just want to say thank you for all the efforts that you have made. Please continue to pray for us. Uh, 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 the Eunice and I are working on our requirements. Uh, wow, well, there's, there's a lot. And we, we feel for you uh, right now. Thank you. God bless you. And have a wonderful Sunday. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, today is Promotion Sunday. Yay! So, we would like to honor all the students from kindergarten to adult school tonight. So, we will be starting off with our children. So, we could call our children's pastor, Pastor Marty, to please come up and hand out our small tokens of appreciation to our grade school students from kindergarten to elementary. All right, so if you could come down. Uh, please come up and we will recognize you. Starting off with Kindergarten, Timothy Murphy, Lindstrom Elementary School, Spectacular Speller Award. Samuel Flores, Lille Elementary School, awardee for Best in English, Language and Arts, awarded Best Swim Mate of the Year for 8 years old and under, Lakewood Aquatics. Fiona Gon, Park Elementary School, Student of the Month. <clears throat> Joanna Isabel I. Tupal, Nims Elementary School, Second and Third Semester, Wildcat Pride for Academic Excellence, Matt B. Finalist, Principal AR Challenge Award, and Roar Award, Responsible, Organized, Active Learner, and Respectful. John Christopher Chin, Solano Elementary School, Student of the Month. Most Improved in Academics, Perfect Attendance Award, Certificate of Achievement, Piano Level 1 at Lincoln Heights Youth Center, and promoted to Taekwondo Red Black Belt. Promoted 4th grade, finished 4th grade, Katie De La Cruz, promoted Sonora Elementary School, Body Not a Bully Award, successfully meeting AR goals for the entire year. Julian Chua, Leal Elementary School, Spirit of Leo Awardee, Second time, two-time awardee for excellence in language and arts. And Rafaela Flores, Lille Elementary School, Best in English, Language and Arts, GATE Program, MVP, Swimmer of the Year, Liquid Aquatics, Leadership Award, Highest Pointer Award for Girls Under 10 Years Old, Record Holder for 100-meter Freestyle, Backstroke, 50-meter Butterfly, 100-meter Butterfly, 200-meter Medley, Rank 7 for 7 to 10 years old, SoCal Jag Competition. Highest honor merit for grade 2 level in piano and 4th place annual Yamaha Competition 2017. <clears throat> Finished 5th grade, Carly Bercero. Hard worker and pleasure to have in class by all her teachers. High honors for good grades, great citizenship award and perfect attendance for the whole year. Award for School Science Fair and Best Science Project. She also represented her school at the District Science Fair in Long Beach. Ivan Joshua Vidalian, Garfield Elementary School, President's Award for Outstanding Academic Excellence, Awardee for Math and Writing, Student of Character, Value and Perseverance and Citizenship, Perfect Attendance for All Semesters, and Outstanding Finisher in the Junior Long Beach Runners. Catherine Australia, Juarez Elementary School, Smart Academy, 100% AR, Achievement in Critical Thinking, Accelerated in Math. Cassandra Forlow, Kennedy Elementary School, Promoted, 
7 Flaminiano Lowell Elementary School Student Council Treasurer Straight A Student in Excellence in Presentation All right, promoted sixth grade, uh, finished sixth grade, Vince Andrew Murphy, Lindstrom Elementary School, Presidential Award, Academic Achievement, All Semesters, Star Certificate, Walk Through the Ancient World, First Place. Nathaniel Chin, graduated sixth grade, Solano Elementary School, received President's Gold Award for achieving outstanding academic excellence, perfect attendance award, and was chosen to represent his school at the Dodger Stadium to receive Dodgers Attendance Awards and meet Dodgers players. 100 Mile Club Achievement Award, Certificate of Achievement in Piano Level 2, Certificate of Achievement in Clarinet Advanced Level, and Promoted to Taekwondo, Red and Black Stripes. Promoted Tiffany Gone, Park Elementary School, Student of the Month. We hope this is our elementary kids for the batch 2017-2018. All right, take a bow, kids. Good job. Can we call now our... All right, can we call now Pastor Amy for our youth to our bridge? Finish 7th grade, Aaron James Serrano, Carmenita Middle School, Volleyball, Soccer, Track Champion, 1st place, Long Jump, 1st place, 8x2 Relay, Director of Publicity for ASB, Top 3 in 4 Yearbook Categories. Naomi Ann Tegico, 7th grade, Whitney High School, Straight A, GPA 4.0, 2018 SoCal Fine Arts Vocal Solo, Superior with Invitation, Excellent in Urban Solo. Jacqueline Ann Kimosing, Ross Middle School, Exemplary Honor Roll, first and second semester, excellent worship dance solo, urban dance solo, female vocal junior and string solo, fine arts. And Jody Denise Bidalian, Stevens Middle School, Principal Awardee for Academic Excellence, 4.0 GPA for all semesters, qualified Stevens Middle School All Girls Basketball Team. Alyssa Bracero, Honor Roll, 4.0 GPA, President's Education Award, Perfect Attendance, Great Citizenship Award, California Junior Scholarship Foundation, Female Leadership Academy. Nicolo Rodriguez, Lindsay Middle School, Honor Roll, 3.24 GPA. Danielle Andres, Ross Middle School, first and second semester, Principal Honor Roll, First Semester Perfect Attendance, Student of the Month in History and Science, Outstanding Achievement in Integrated Science. And Jalen Joy Gone, Carroldale Learning Community, attending a Harbor Teacher Preparatory Academy in LA Harbor College, Honor Roll Fall Semester Principal Award Recipient 4.0 GPA, President's Award for Educational Excellence, Gold Award for Outstanding Academic Excellence 2018. Participant Junior Upcoming Medical Professional Program and participant of California HOSA competition. She finished College of Medical Technology course in LA Harbor College. She also received a superior award with invitation for Junior Short Sermon at the SoCal Fine Arts 2018. Ninth grade, Sasha Rodriguez, Sato Academy of Math and Science, Honor Roll 4.0 GPA. HOSA Participant Certification. Kyle Robert Marquez Mayfer High School, first quarter high honors, second quarter high honors, third quarter high honors, exceptional academic performance in showtime, visual and performing arts vocal, intermediate mixed division, 2A extravaganza 2018 best performer, outstanding freshman, and moving on to national male vocal solo and small vocal ensemble. Rob Martin Flores, Whitney High School, 4.0 GPA, Varsity Volleyball Team, Academic League Champion for Volleyball, Japanese National Honor Society, 
and National Honor Society. Marty's Charlie's Marty's Charlie Ware Jr. <laughs> sure, high school honor student, marching band, concert band, perfect attendance, most improved award for marching and concert band. Paul Joseph Andres, promoted Gar High School. Alan Jacob Velasco Serrano, Cerritos High School, promoted. Advancing to national for spoken word, short sermon, dramatized coding, and... What's the other one? It's not here. <laughs> Four awards. <laughs> Liam Jeremy Chua, Cerritos High School, Western Bands Association, Grand Championship Bronze Medalist. Premios the Oro Award and Medallion for Outstanding Achievement in Wind Symphony. Silver Performance at the Carnegie Hall, New York International Music Festival. Church, this is these are our students for middle school up to 11th grade. Take a bow, guys. All right, Pastor Amy, this will now be your new members for Bridge. Our batch 2018, starting off with Brianna Rain Habines, St. Scholasticas Academy, Marikina, Philippines. So she was the first recipient of the grade K-12 to in the Philippines, <laughs> the first batch. Rob Matthew Albania Flores, Whitney High School, 4.3 GPA, recipient of highest honors, Japanese National Honor Society, State by Literacy Seal, National Honor Society, perfect attendance since 8th grade, cross-country dragon boating, will attend University of California, Berkeley as a major in chemistry. John Paolo Kimosing, Cerritos High School, ABC USD Distinguished Scholar Medallion, High Honors Award, Recipient, State Seal of Biliteracy, Runner Up 2017 Divisions 5 Boys Volleyball, Superior Score 2017 Acrobat, Advancing to Cal State, Cal Poly Pomona, with a major in Math. Eric Sean Rufino Pacheco graduated Mayfair High School and with academic honors varsity volleyball player going to Cal State Long Beach. And Elijah Samuel Figueroa Mayfair High School with Academic Honor Award, Theater Award, Vocal Department Award, Instrumental Department Award, First Place, Color Guard in all of SoCal Field Season, Bronze Medal in all of SoCal Winter Guard Season, World Guard International Finalist, Two-Time Outstanding Performer of the Year, Perpetual Plaque Award, Best Musician, Choreographer's Award, Best Senior, Vice President and Choreographer of Showtime 2016-2018, Captain of the May for Color Guard 2017-2018 and advancing to Fine Arts Nationals in Houston, Texas. So these are our batch 2018. And Pastor Amy, they're all yours. So see you in Bridge on Thursday. <laughs> Alright. Take a bow, guys. Woohoo! All right. Now let's recognize our college students. Of course, let's start off with Erin Pacheco, President's List, Cal State Long Beach. Marie Vidalion, Cal State Long Beach, BS Biology. Jonathan Robert Pena, Dental Hygiene, Cerritos College. Charmaine Andres, Cerritos College. Derek Dizon, Cerritos College. 
NJ Tikikos, Ridos College, Emmanuel Hurtas, Madeleine Paragas, Biola University, Eliazar Clemente, Ezekiel Clemente, Pensacola College. And our graduates from the college category, starting off with Winona Trisha Figueroa, graduated Vanguard University, major in kinesiology, pre-health, planning to become a physical therapist. Graduate. <laughs> And Hannah Andres, Biola University, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Leadership Award. There you go. So these are our college students who are still in college and just finished graduating college. Congratulations, guys. Take a bow. All right. Follow your pastor. <laughs> See you on Thursday. <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> 7 p.m., Pastor Amy said. <laughs> all right, if we can all stand. Actually, students, can you go to your parents first and let's just thank the Lord for a wonderful 2017, 2018 time that we were able to surpass Another year. <laughs> so, I know it's not back to school Sunday yet. It's still in August. But let's just thank the Lord for another year that we were able to finish 2017, 2018. I know some of the adults, you know, some of you are still in school. So, let me know when you're finished too so we could recognize you also. But thank, let's thank, just thank the Lord for... A wonderful time from the worship to the word through Pastor Marty about repentance and now all this recognition, all the glory, give, we give it to our God. Amen? All the glory belongs to our God and we give it back to Him. I raise it up. <laughs> but I was able to just see and just be thankful that, wow, every year it's just how great and awesome our God is through our students for this year. Amen? So we're just excited. Let's lift them up. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise, Lord God. For you alone are worthy, Lord God. From the start, Lord God, of this day, Lord God, from the, serve, from the worship to the world, Lord God, of how awesome, Lord God, you are of, of a compassionate God, that you forgive us, Lord God, is when we come to you, Lord God, and we ask for repentance, Lord God. And now, Lord God, seeing all this recognition, Lord God, of all the achievements of our students, from academics to sports to music, Lord God, and whatever field, whether it's in school, in the church, or in their communities, Lord God, we just lay it down, Lord God, at your feet, Lord God, because it's not to us, Lord God, but to your name, Lord God, be all the glory forevermore, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for, the, for your goodness and faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, for taking good care of our children, Lord God, and each one, Lord God, that is here from the start of the school year to now to the end, Lord God. And Lord, we just continue to lift them up to you, Lord God, that this generation, Lord God, will be world changers, Lord God, that they will be the one to influence, Lord God, their classmates, Lord God, wherever they go, Lord God, as they sing, Lord God, and shout out your name, Lord God, for every place that they would go, Lord Jesus. Lord, for those students who will be going out of state, Lord God, we just lift them up to you, Lord God. Pray that you just guide them, Lord God, and protect them. And for those who are planning, Lord God, to what is your will and what's your plan, Lord God, for them. May they continue to know, Lord God, and as you lead them, guide them, Lord God, throughout. Lord, thank you for each one that is here. Thank you for our time together. We just continue to lift up even our uh, Pastor Eric and Ruth uh, and Nati, Nati Eunice, Lord God, as they start their school also in the Philippines, Lord God, this coming um, week, Lord God. Tomorrow, Lord, today, Lord God, as they start it, Lord Jesus, in the Philippines, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Bring us home safe tonight, we pray, and thank you for everything that you have done. We give you back all the honor, the glory, and the praise, Lord God, for you deserve it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.